Well, they, they come to me as if they belong to me. But they know well he's yours, Elsie, if you take a wee bit of trouble with them. Ah, uh, Bobby boy, shall I give you some breakfast, eh? I do that, lassie. Well, Jock, are you ready to go now? Aye, I've got things. It wasn't a bad year for the lambing, Master, I can say that. No. And young Master Watt, you had learned the way of it now. Aye, you taught him well enough. <coughs> Elsie, take Bobby into the house, will you? Jock and you are away to Edinburgh. The market. Please, Paddy, you're not coming this time. Go with your mistress and hold your knife. <coughs> Maybe he'll keep quiet there and stop his grieving. Mother, why did old Jock not take Bobby to the market with him? Give him a bowl of broth, keep him quiet. Is Bobby really my old dog now? To do what I like with? Aye, he's yours. And old Jock will not mind it? But you've gone from Colbray, you know that. Aye. I'm not happy myself, mister. Well, well, times are very hard, Jock. I just can't afford you, that's all. I'm no blaming you, mister. I've been a shepherd now for 60 years. It wouldn't be so far to find another place. I didn't tell the bears you wouldn't be coming home with me. I couldn't tell them. No. It would serve no purpose. Get up, get up. By gun time. How do you folk here ever get used to the crack of it? My feet nearly jumped off my neck. I'd like to pay you for two weeks, Jock. I'll not take a shilling. I haven't earned. Well, if you want. There's no more to be said. Thank you. I'll be going on my way. Aye. Goodbye, then, Jock. Good luck to you. Clear me, Mr. Trail. Clear the dog. Jumping on my lap and howling like a banshee. You're in his master's usual place for dinner on market day. What's wrong, Bobby? You're usually here bang on time with a one o'clock gun. And you're all muddy and panting, laddie. Where's old Jock? No, old Jock's not here, Bobby. Go find him. 
I'd take my hand to the wee dog for adopting me like that. If I put my hand to everyone that dirties up the place, I'd have my work cut out on thinking. Have you seen any of you, the old shepherd body from Corbray, old jock in the market today? Aye. Just after that time gone, but I haven't seen him since. It's the first time in years he hasn't come to me for his dinner. Yet his wee dog was here. The wee healthy grieving for you. Give me a chance to get my bread. <laughs> You're as great as cold as the wife I never had. <laughs> is that you, Bobby? Ian, <laughs> yeah. what is that, Bobby? Did you find? So you found him. All right, Larry, I'm coming. Shock. Shock, Mama, where is you? Man, you're sick. I'm your wet food. Here, come on, come over to my place. Give me your arm. Get coat and plan and sit down here by the fire. Here, give me the bag. Here. I am wet. It's a misty night. Misty? It's raining like a torrent. And you call it misty. I'm telling you, if Noah himself had been a rolling star, he'd have said the deluge flooding the world was just... Just fair wet. And why not the deluge fair wet, Mr. Trail? Have you had your supper yet, man? No, no yet, but don't bother yourself, Mr. Trail. I'm bothered as it is. So don't make it worse by arguing. And you, Bobby, stop that. I'm no need of a shower in the house, thank you. No, yet a pattern of dirty feet. <laughs> He's talking to you. Here now. Eat. You were always a hospitable man, Mr. Trail. And pray, how many market days have you spent your sixpence eating here? I'm thinking of nothing more than to warm me up so you'll be coming here again. No, did he thank me for that? You're fortunate that that's a very intelligent wee dog you have. He was here at the time gun searching for you. <coughs> Man, you're ill. <coughs> you're very ill. Now, you stay here and eat your food. I'll go and get a doctor for you. No, I'll not see a doctor. Man, you're in need of a dose of physic and a building mean family for a day or two until you're right again. No. Infirmaries for poor people that are dying. No man leaves the infirmary alive. Job, that's not true. Well, I'll go there myself if I so much as cut my finger. Let any student lad have it up for me. That only proves you're soft, but not me. All right, all right, now calm yourself. Nobody's going to make you do what you don't wish. Now, eat your broth. Bobby. Bobby, come here. Bobby, where are you? Oh. He's over at my library in the corner there. Is he so smart he likes to read? No, he can't read, Mr. Trail. Can't read myself. That's a lot of books you've got there, Mr. Trail. You must be a very serious man. Aye, I am that. And books are wife and bairns to me in as good company as that wee beast is to yourself. Here, Bobby. I'm thinking you've not had very much to eat today yourself, lad. Here, there. He's a good wee beast, this Bobby of yours. You must be very proud of him. Aye, but he's not my own dog. He's not mine at all. Man, he's fair fond of you. And a dog chooses his own master. Uh, but he can't choose. He's got to go home. I can't say that it won't be sad parting, but he's got to go. Uh, I must get one to call Bray so they can come and take him home. 
Okay. I got a nice kill there and mind old chalk. I have to fetch the doctor to him. I'm quite well. Don't let your doctor see me. You're very sick, Chuck. It's the only thing. Now you stay here. You'll not take me to the infirmary. Come on, Bobby. to do with you, laddie. I can get a lodging in here, but the old woman that runs it will not take a dog. What's that you're saying? Uh, you're a canny wee dog. You're right. I've carried newborn lambs in the pocket of my brady, so why not you, eh? <laughs> Very well, in you go. a bed for the night if you have one free. Free, is it? No, no, I didn't mean it that way. I've been here before, you know. So you have, so you have. Oh, mind you. You're the one they call old Jock. Here's the money for my bed. And the pardon for the light. Mm. <coughs> There's a front room at the very top of the stairs. Got anybody in it? No, no. Nobody in there. That cough you have. If you're waiting your neighbours wait, you'll need to fight it out for yourself. <laughs> I know what I'm about. The old city smell up here. It was worth the crying, eh, Bobby? I left a wee something here a few months back. Hi, it's here yet. A posy of heather, laddie, and not dead. You can almost smell the moors in it. Can you not? What do you say, Bobby? Will we pretend we're out there now? Come on, then. Thanks for your supper. That's it, a good laddie. Oh, down, down, down. Oh, boy. <laughs> good, good. Die for your country. Die for your country now. Ah, oh, that's a good laddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fool old jokers. I have a Bible for my comfort and I cannot read. My father gave it to me for nearly dying in his croft. It's the only thing I've got. 
A book I cannot read, and a fool dog that's not my own. You must get to sleep now. And you too, laddie. Lie quiet now. <laughs> Mr. Did, he? Did any of you find anything out about that old shepherd yet? He hasn't been found and taken to the infirmary. Or to the lockup. I know for certain. Well, I didn't understand it. He tell you have gone far. And I'm fair worried about him. But I tell you, if you see a wee bit of a sky terrier running loose, the old man will be far away, so keep your eyes open. Ah, I've got better things to do. Aye, and so have I. And I'll pay my taxes where your wages come from, so mind your manners. Ah, yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Good morning, laddie. Here, just a minute. If you see a wee sky terrier, a weekly dog anyway near Cowgate or the market. Come and tell me and I'll give you both a penny. A penny? A whole penny each? All right. But off you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. See what you can find. Eyes of pneumonia and of being old and just plain worn out. You see? The old man dies a natural death. Nobody's harmed him, not even been robbed. Hold your noise, woman. It's something strange to find a decent old country body in a foul place like this. This is a clean, respectable house. Who was he? Odd Jock. He had no name but that. His name was John Gray. There was enough here to give him a decent burial. He'll now have a pauper's grave. Right, I see to it. There's no enough to hire a carriage or even a car, so we'll have to rest in the kirkyard that is nearest. Now, clear out this room, all of you. Uh, not you, Campbell. What's that dog doing here? Whose dog is it? The old man's? No, no, he didn't have a dog. I ate it so. I'm... I heard the dog barking in the night. Why, that's true. There was a dog barking. Then it's my duty to take him to the police station. He's got no collar, and for all I know, no license. Come here, now, buddy. the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We therefore commit his body to the ground, 
earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, which thy well-beloved son shall then pronounce on all that love and fear thee, saying, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Good night, you Good night. It's past time for locking up. <laughs> What are you doing there? Be off here. Come on. Come on. A cock yard's no place for a dog. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Hi. Thank you. What do you think you're doing? Oh, cross my way. Mr. Clare. Mr. Clare, you found a wee dog. Where have you been, Bobby? Did the time gun bring you for your dinner? Where is some truck, Maddie? What have you done with him? <coughs> wish, Bobby, wish. What is it, then? Is it old truck? Well, where is he? Oh, Mr. Trey, do we not get the penny? Leave the child, leave the dinner, Mother now. What's the dog doing in here, anyway? Throw him out. He's shaking with your sickness. No, man, he's hungry. And an old customer. Which is more than you are yourself. Out you go. Come on, get out. Yeah, Bobby, come on now. What about it? Did you get the penny, Ellie? No. No penny. I wish I knew where you came from, Bobby. And where you left your master. Now then, Bobby, be a good dog and let's go and find old Jock, eh, Larry? Here, Bobby, wait, here. You want to leave me through the old cut, yeah, Larry? Wait. The gate's no locked yet. That's only latched. Who's that at the gate? Mr. Trail, what in the world are you doing prowling about the cat yard? It's time for locking up. I'll follow the wee dog here, Mr. Brown. Dog? There's no dog here. It isn't permitted. I'll just let him in myself. You let a dog in the cat yard? Aye. Eh, then I'll let the law on you. You're supposed to be such a learned man. Can you not read the regulations? Those regulations are no the law of the land, James Brown, and well you know it. You made up those rules yourself. I'll have no dog in Greyfriars cat yard. You know that. Yours or anybody else's? The dog is my mine. But I make a bargain with you. I'll take him home with me. And you can keep your regulations. Uh, and I will, too. I caught him put out one dog last night, and he's not been back. And I catch this one, too, mind you. Come on. Now then, you go that way, and I'll go here. Here, dog. Here. Where are you? Come. Here, dog. Here. Here now. Okay. Ellie! Who's that? Shh! Mr. Train, it's you! The wee dog that was at my place. Ah, and Tammy and me chased him there, and he didn't give us a penny. Weesh, Ellie. Listen to me a minute. For a penny, I'll listen. For a silver shilling, listen. A shilling? If you see the wee dog again, 
Not be so far away, I'm thinking. Call him Bobby and fetch him to me. You or any of you bands. I'm the one that brings him. You'll get a silver shilling. Have you taken leave of your senses? Now I'll have every bear in the neighborhood climbing all over my backyard. And half of them are like wild beasts as it is. No, at least they're not. No, because you're soft with him. I'm no soft with I'm a loving thing. A bairn's like a dog in many ways. You take a stick to one or the other and you'll misbehave the worse. The bairns around here are poor and neglected, but they're no vicious. You get on the right side of them, man, and you'll live easier. Wait a minute. You see, there was a dog here yesterday. Aye, we are funeral and creeping about here afterwards. Who's funeral? An old man named John Gray. Dead of pneumonia in a lodging house at Cowgate. Pneumonia? Aye, that would be it. Uh, and carried here by such a bunch of jailbirds as you never did see. And no mourners. John Gray, you say his name was. And he was a little jock. And if the wee dog was with him, he had a mourner, all right. Poor old man, I drove him to his death. What are you saying, man? He came to me sick, and I told him he should be in the infirmary and went for a doctor to make him go. But he went away. An old sick man in the rain. Where's he buried? Over here. That's where they laid him down. What's that? Yeah. Bobby. Oh. Here, laddie. Come here. Ah, yeah. Come out now. Hot fight. Ah, you have him, huh? That's the dog I put out before. Aye. The old man was his master. Be that as it may, the dog's no staying in my backyard. And might I remind you it's past time for locking up. Can he no bite here till he's cleaned? No, he cannot. It's against the regulations. Then you put him out. You and your regulations. For I can. Good night to you, Mr. Brown. There. Now he's out. And good night and good riddance to the pair of you. Jeannie, what on earth are you doing out there in the dark, man? Administering the law. Oh. And what James Brown says in Greyfriars' Kirkyard is the law. Now what are we going to do, laddie? You can't get in there now. It's locked. You might as well face up to the fact you can't get in. Why don't you come home with me, laddie? I'm not a bad man to live with. Will you know, come? I ask, I ask, Miss Bobby Wist. Mr. Trey, have you taken to a dog at your time of life? I would if you'd only take time. Then keep in the order. How do you expect my uh, customers to read enough to satisfy their examiners if they're disturbed by all this barking? You'll stop that dog's noise or I'll send for the police. Jordi Ross. Yes, Mr. Trey? Jordi, I have a problem. Would you like to earn a sixpence? A sixpence? Aye, I would. But it's yours. If you know a way to smuggle this wee dog into the kirkyard yonder, and never mind why. Well, there might be a way. And you're the man who knows how. Aye. Give me the sixpence. Uh, you like me now you're getting your way, don't you? Here. And Jordy, if you say a word about this to anyone, I'll give you a good lick. Oh, I will not tell, Mr. Trail. I'll be very discreet. Yeah. Any dog will be permitted in Greyfriars' Kirkyard as long as I'm caretaker here. Well, good afternoon, mister. There's not much left to eat, I'm afraid. It's after 2.30. I've had my dinner. I'm, uh, I'm looking for a dog and I was directed here. A dog? I am from Colbury, and the dog belongs to my bear. I ran away to follow an old shepherd buddy that used to work for me. Old Jock? Ah, you know him. Well, where is he? It wasn't your right of him to win that dog away from my bear. 
Oh, Jock's dead, mister. Dead? Aye, I have pneumonia. And buried these four days since in old Greyfriars' cockyard. Greyfriars? Well, that's our ground for a shepherd, buddy, isn't it? Aye. But no so grand as heaven, eh? Oh, poor old Jock. I shouldn't have let him go, but I had no choice. I, I didn't realize he was that sick, mister, if I had known. Well, he's dead. Maybe there's others to blame. The wee dog's been here every day since. He's over in the corner there, sleeping on the center. Oh, why, uh, that's Bobby, all right. Now, here, that's Jock's plate he's sleeping on. I bought it from the keeper of the lodging house he died in. Well, he looks well fed, too. You've been very good to him, mister. If you think I was aiming to keep... Oh, you could, mister, if it was up to me, but my bear's grieving at heart to for him. Oh. Well, it's best he should go in any case. He'll have none of me. Oh, he eats here. But he lives in the old cutyard where he's not permitted, but... That hard to catch. I'll take him away. I'll take him. You'll have a hold. You better hold him close, you'll know like going. Come on, Bobby, it's me, it's me. Thank you, sir. Here. Wrap him in the paddy. You'll hold him firm and keep him quiet. And take him now, I'm busy. Hi. Oh, you find Bobby, Father. I have got to be in the dark. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Take him away, buddy. Right, Father. Just you settle down in here, buddy. That's right, buddy. And make him a bit of a last row, see? That's right. Underneath there. Poor Bobby. But right here, and I'll come by in the morning. Ah, you'll have to feed him. I'll lead him on a rope for a wee while. But just leave him in here until he's used to it, eh? Now, come on, Lassie. Bye-bye, Bobby. Now you've got Bobby back. Away to bed. Here, Lassie. Take Jessie with you. Off you go now. Go on. Good night, Father. Good night, Mother. Did you find him with old Jock? No. Old Jock is dead. Dead. Aye. Dead to pneumonia, poor old soul. Do you know what? He's buried in Greyfriars itself. Oh, Jock, and the Lairds and Ladies. That's all the grand for him. Well, he's graves night to the Martyr's Monument. And you know, we Bobby there slept in it every night. And hid from the caretaker, too, for it's strictly forbidden. <laughs> oh, he's got mere respect for the law, that kid.
How did he get back? I put a stop to this. John Traylor told me a wicked lie. Mr. Traylor? Uh, he did. He said the dog had been took away. So there you are. So you're back. And how did you get back? And don't be looking so pleased with yourself. You're breaking the law of trespass. You hear me? And look at him, all mud and tangled hair. Like an old fishwife from Cowgate itself. And just as useless. No useless, Jamie. See what he's done? Four great rats he's killed. You're a brave wee dog. Oh, Fladdy, look at that. He's going up and staying up. If I have to take him to the police myself. He's killed his own weight in vermin. Look here and over there, too. And you know well how they pester the Turk. I'm no saying he's not money fighter. But he's still breaking the law. And there's only one thing to do with him. Aye, there is only one thing to do. And we'll do it right now. We'll give him a good wash. A good wash? Have you taken leave of your senses, woman? I'll do no such thing. And when he's dry, Jamie Brown, he'll be needing his breakfast. He looks fair seen. Breakfast now, is it? A bit of liver and such like, no doubt. And a serving maid to wait, honey. Ah, uh, hold your grumbling man, I'll get him some scraps. There now. Stop your struggling. A trespasser, that's what you are. No dogs permitted, that's the rule. Mind you that. <laughs> you know, beguile me. Because, doggy, you're going out. Out, that's where you're going. He's a bonny wee thing, you cannot deny that, Jamie. I was wishing you didn't have to send him away. I have my duty to the minister and the Kirk authorities, and I will not discuss the matter. Ah, oh, there's no rule against his living here with us. With us? <laughs> Woman, I'll have no dog in my house. He'd be company for me. For us, Jamie. Ah, oh, man, you used to say yourself years ago that a dog could be as much company as a bear. Aye, uh, and make just as much noise. <laughs> uh, Bobby, come here. I have work to do. Mark, you're no beguiling me. No. No, there you are. Rat killing or no? Look now. No dogs permitted is the rule. So out you go. How are we? Run along. How are we? Hey. And this girl's is Greyfriars Kirkyard, the last resting place of many distinguished people who have helped to shape the history of Scotland. Open the gates, caretaker, Aye. and mind girls not to tread on the grass. Aye, back a wee bit then. Ah, and good riddance. I don't know what you're up to, but dinner hang around my gates. I want no bands from the tenements in my kirkyard. I'm willing to have them. Ah, you can see that. Thank <laughs> you. 
There with your mouths open. Serve six dishes of the chicken stew on the corner table there. This tray's got so much to eat, I need to tell himself. Come on now, set yourselves down. And mind your manners. Come on. thing and no like these. Going. You think I'm a fool, don't you? Well, everybody knows that. Now I'll have to go away to the kirkyard. 
You'll know better there now. It's locked. Uh, so you've come back. Uh, you can wag your fool tail, keeping me waiting here in the cold. Ah, well. Come in, you wee fool. Good evening, Mr. Brown. I thought there was a strict regulation against dogs in the courtyard. Eh, uh, there is. And the dog will sleep in my house the night. If that concerns you... He'll not sleep in anybody's house. No, in yours, maybe. But my wife, Jeannie, has taken a fancy to the dog. And he to us. Huh? Ah, uh, we found him this morning all covered with mud and tired out. We washed him, and he's grateful. And I feed him. Ah, uh, and you bring him back into the courtyard at night in the cold. And against the law. The wee dog is sleeping in my house the night and every night. And you no need to bother feeding him any more, Mr. Trey. The wee dog has turned to us. So good night to you. Where are you off to? Come here, but. Ah, so there you are. Now you'll come to my house or out you go. You cannot be living there. I told you that. If you come into the house, you can sleep before the fire. But you cannot sleep here, laddie. You see, I lose my job. Oh, thank you, Bobby. That's a good boy. Because I want you to come to the house. <laughs> whisk, whisk! Hold your tongue! Uh -huh. You never know who your friends are. Man or dog. Jamie, are you there? Has the widow come back? Uh, he's come back. But no to us. Bairns can leave my dog alone. He's not your dog, Mr. Brown. He lives here. He's at Mr. Charles as much as here. And up there with us even more than that. Bobby's a very independent dog. Ah, more big words, is it? They tell me that you're now at Harriet's Grand School. <laughs> a boy like you from the tenements. Ah, oh, Mr. Charles persuaded the master there to take me. Mr. Trail does a mighty lot of interfering into other people's affairs, if you ask me. And why would he want to get a bairn like you into such a fine school? Well, he said my legs will never be any good, so I have to learn to make a living with my head. Ah, well... Well, then, don't waste your time playing with dogs. Be off with you. Can we bring him to play? I'll bring him. Whisk, whisk. This is a cracker. Have you no respect, you young heathen? Just go on, Mr. Brown. Ah. And remember, I don't want you bringing that dog back covered with mud to foul my kitchen. Did you hear me? Yes, Bobby. I don't think he's going to make it What with trail and the bairns, the dog belongs to nobody. Hmm. Good riddance to him. Are you talking to me, Mr. Brown? No, I was not. I was talking about yon wee dog. Aye. I've been watching that dog running about the streets here for a long time, but he's too quick. I've never been able to catch him. Catch him? For what? Why, is he your dog? Are you keeping a dog in the courtyard, Mr. Brown? He's no my dog. But why would you want to catch him? He's got no collar. Maybe he's got no license, and that's against the law. Eh? And we all know that the law of Scotland couldn't have lasted another day without you, Mr. McLean. If he's no your dog, who's is he? I wouldn't know. But, uh, why don't you ask Mr. Trail? Mm. He seems to know everything about everybody here in Greyfriars. Aye. Ask him. Mr. Trail. Good afternoon, dear Davy. And how are you? 
finish for your tables, lassie. He's no come for you. So you've got a wee dog here now, John, eh? I didn't know. Well, maybe there's still a few things you don't know, lady. The wee dog's a customer of mine. I'm not here for jokes. Ah, oh, away, man. Don't be so pompous. I'm here in the line of duty. Are you Mr. John Trail? Who it is, you man? You know my name as well as you know your own. The formality of the law to make you admit your identity. Here's a bit of paper for you. You're summoned to appear before the magistrate of the barrack court tomorrow to answer a charge of owning or harboring one dog upon which you have not paid the license tax of seven shillings. Mind you, if the seven shillings were to be paid in before tomorrow, the charge would not be pursued. Who says I own or harbour a dog? I can use my eyes, can't I? Can you use your head? Yes, I can. I've been watching that dog for a long, long time. And now, just this week, there's new rules about dogs in the city. And you think you'll force me to pay the license for him, don't you? And I think I know who's behind all this. That old fool in a cat card, James Brown. <laughs> I'll see to this right away, so you can take yourself off. You mean you'll pay? No! Then you'll present yourself to the court tomorrow. Joke? No, it's no joke at all, lassie. The municipal court of Edinburgh is very important. The Lord Provost himself sits on the bench there when it's his turn to do so. It's a serious matter. Well, I have cause to make. You and the laddie do your work while I'm away. Bobby, you come with me. Mrs. Brown, I... I wish to have a word with your husband. On a matter of business. I'm afraid he isn't very well today, Mr. Trail, and he's sleeping in his bed. Can I give him a message? No. It's a very particular matter. I'll attend to it myself. Hadn't you better take your dog inside? Bobby! Bobby, my wee... Oh, my wee bear. Case against John Trail. Mr. Trail in court? I'm here. John Trail, you are the landlord of Trail's Dining Rooms in Greyfriars Place. I certainly am. And everybody here knows I am. You are required merely to admit your identity. Read the charge. You have been summoned here to answer the charge that you, John Trail, are harboring a dog, unlicensed and stray, in contravention of the new orders and powers invested in the Borough Police to apprehend such animals. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Very well. Call Sergeant McLean. I swear by my God, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, well, we got. Sergeant McLean, the deposition you made to this court is correct in every particular. Yes, sir. I followed the said dog into Mr. Trail's place and saw the said dog eating there and being sheltered by the accused who did not deny the presence of the said dog. There's an awful lot of said about this wee dog. Did he know say anything to you? <laughs> Order! You will confine your observations to the bench. Now then, are you denying the sergeant's statement? I'm no denying the fact that he saw that wee dog on the premises, Your Honor. Aye, that's what I've heard. The dog is not my dog. I'm no his master. He doesn't sleep under my roof. Then who is his master and where does he sleep? His master's in his grave in old Grey Friars Kirkyard these many months and the dog sleeps on the mound. Jim, wake up. I have a story. You mean to tell this court that the dog could sleep out in the open all through the winter in a graveyard? This one has, Your Honour. He's a Sky Terrier with a coat on him as thick as the thatch on the roof. Have you any witnesses to prove such a ridiculous story? The caretaker of the Kirkyard, like myself, has been a sort of friend of the wee dog. And no doubt would be pleased to tell Your Honour so. But for the misfortune, he's so sick. He can't leave his house. But no doubt, if necessary, his deposition could be taken. Do the Great Fires Cup authorities know about this? I've been to inform the minister, Dr. Lee, Your Honour. But he's no in Edinburgh. He's away in France for his health. Well, there would seem to be no witnesses who are not in poor health. Aye, Your Honour. Half a hundred children in the tenements there see him every day and have made a great pet of the wee dog. If you regard them as confident witnesses. Though most of them are over young. Mr. Trail, are you being impertinent? Certainly not. He asked me for witnesses that Bobby sleeps in the kirkyard. Mr. Trail, I don't know if you've consulted a lawyer about this charge of harboring the dog. I think I have a good enough tongue in my head to be my own lawyer. <laughs> tongue is certainly low enough, Mr. Trail. If this dog is ownerless and unlicensed, it will have to be taken up with the police. That doesn't seem fair to me. Fair, sir, fair. That is the law. 
utterless dogs have become a perfect nuisance in this town. Unless this dog's license is paid, it will have to be put away, and that'll be the end of the matter. Now, sir, are you prepared to pay, or am I to make out an order for this dog to be taken? It's not a matter of seven shillings for a dog's license, Your Honor. This is a matter of principle. Principle? What principle? I cannot be responsible for what is not my own. The dog is not with me for more than two hours out of the 24. The rest of the time he's in the kirkyard, sleeping and working. Working? I working. He's employed in the kirkyard, killing vermin and the like that the hard-working caretaker, Mr. Brown, is now able to do for himself. <laughs> Order! Mr. Phil, you refuse to pay this license. On a matter of... Kindly don't interrupt. Quite apart from the question of the license, there is something else. According to the law, you are guilty of harboring a stray without reporting the fact to the police. For that, the minimum fine of five shillings will be imposed. And if I pay the license against my principles, the fine will no be imposed? That is so. In that case, Your Honor, I shall appeal against your decision to the Lord Provost and all the other magistrates and then to the Court of Sessions. Mr. Trail, the High Judiciary have more important business than reviewing small matters of this kind. It's no small matter for me to be entered into the Borough Court's records as a lawbreaker. If I refuse to pay the license but continue to feed the wee dog as I always have, you'll hold me in contempt of court. If you're asking for information... I'm no asking for anything. I'm making plain my own line of conduct. But you're asking me to let a wee dog starve for a legal technicality. <laughs> Order, silence! Mr. Trail, are you defying this court? Certainly not, Your Honor. You deny ownership of this wretched dog, yet you bring no witnesses to support your story? No witnesses, Your Honor. But by your leave, I'd like to say this. Davy, the next time you're near my dining rooms, come in and let the wee dog you're persecuting gear lesson in manners and morals. Bobby, at least, has never bit the hand that feeds him. But you have, Davy. That's it. And you've had many a free meal from me. <laughs> Silence! Mr. Dale, on your own admission, you are guilty of harboring a stray without reporting it as such. You will therefore present yourself here and bring the dog with you at... Half past eight to the clock for this court goes into session. Have I no chance to appeal, Your Honor? Half past eight to the clock here tomorrow morning. Step down if you please, Mr. Trail. Here, Lassie. Did you ever give a, a wee dog a good wash? No. But Tammy sometimes washed him for Mr. Brown and says it's no difficult matter. Well, then, Mr. Brown's in poor health, I'm told. So there's no chance of Bobby getting washed again until the sickness is all gone. But I want him washed, Davy. He's serious business ahead of him. He has? Aye, very serious. See you bring him here clean and brushed at eight o'clock in the morning. Are you taking him somewhere, Mr. Trail? Is this a picnic? Aye, I'm taking him somewhere, lassie. But it's no a picnic. It's a serious matter. A principle. But you've done your work. Off you go. Now get away home. a picture. Here. Here's a penny for each of you. Ailey, you can give Tammy some of the porridge cooking on the fire. Oh, what are you thinking, Bobby, Mrs. Trail? To see someone of importance, laddie. But I will take you tired, Bobby. Here. There's me, boy. Uh, come on. Come on now. There's a boy. Hello, come here. Ailey. You're uh, working for Mr. Trail now, are you? Aye, for a whole week now. Did uh, Mr. Trail tell you about the borough court yesterday? About Tim and the wee dog? No. Why? He's just taking Bobby for him now. Aye, to see someone of importance. Oh, that's just his way of putting it. He's taking Bobby to stand before the borough court as he was ordered to. Take Bobby? Why? Well, if a dog has no master to pay for his license, the police take him out and put him out of the way. What? Aye, and Mr. Trell will not pay the license because Bobby's not his dog. How much did he want for the license then? Seven shillings. Seven shillings? That's a fraction. Aye. But I cannot stop here talking. I'm over late for work. Seven shillings to allow one wee dog to live. Not anybody, not even Mr. Trail ever had seven shillings all at once. I have the penny Mr. Trail just gave me. How much have you, Tammy? Seven shillings is 84 pennies, 168 halfpennies, and 336 farthings. 
But there's no folk around here in Kirkyard than five hens and seven shillings. Yes, Ellie. But then over four. But Tony, we have to get it. Mr. Trey is going to give him up. He was wearing all his good clothes and a long face to go to Bobby's burial. Not if we can get the money first. Tell everybody, Ellie. Everybody you can find. And I will too. Every man in Griffiths, Ellie. Really. And run. I've been ready to save the wee dog's life. I'm looking for the man trail, the kiss for the dog. You see it? You gotta go in there until the court is in session at nine o'clock. Remember that. That's my order, sir, from the Lord Provost himself. Uh -huh. The Lord Provost is listed to be here today. I think I better wait. Now, there's many would say this is no much of a case for the Lord Provost to bother his head about your worship. I must be the judge of that, Mr. Clay. Sergeant McLean has the prisoner in custody, I see. Now, Mr. Trail, the point of this is very simple. Do you give food and shelter to this dog? And do you own? Let's take the first point first. Ah, your lordship, uh, I've always fed the wee dog ever since. Well, I've always fed him and I'm no denying it. Why did you? If he's not your own. Well, at first, to ease my conscience, because I blame myself in part for the death of the wee dog's master. You said at first. What then? Oh, uh, I've courted the wee terrier for a long, long time since then because of nobody of my own. But he'll hear none of me. Except he's friendly and polite. He just grieves for the old man that's dead. But the law says the dog must have a new and I can't claim to be that, Your Lordship. Because it's no true. But I can't believe the Lord would make a man abandon his principles and lie, or treat the life of a wee dog for a matter of a few shillings on a piece of paper. The law deals with facts, not with emotions, Mr. Trail. The dog is ownerless and unlicensed. Is there a case about a wee dog in there? You can go in there. You see, Jeannie, I told you that. First, man, my husband and I are important witnesses in the case. Is it in there? Here, yeah, can you go in there? We are the dog's owners, sir. Begging your pardon, your lordship, but that's right. That's right. James Brown, you're telling a lie. He's the caretaker of the kirkyard, your lordship, that's so sick at home in bed. Constable, let these two witnesses in. No one else. Use the outside. Your name? James Brown, Your Lordship. You claim ownership of the dog? Aye, we do. And we've come to pay the license for him. Uh, my wife has the money here in the purse. We just heard about the dog being taken up, and I thought that... Yes, yes, Mr. Brown, you're claiming ownership. In that case... That's not the case at all, Your Lordship. James Brown is not the owner of the dog. If I pay for him, I am. You have no legal right to Bobby any more than I. And Mr. Brown, does the dog sleep under your roof? Well, no, Your Lordship, no at night. No, I cannot say that. He sleeps in the kirkyard. With the minister's permission, of course. Well, no, Your Lordship, I, I cannot say that. Uh... Oh, this is but a wee dog that holds its cub, and it's very respectful. Ah, and he's only been there such a short time, Your Lordship. For some months, Mr. Brown. The minister told me that himself. The minister knows, he told your lordship. He was told by the Bible reader at the funeral. Then by the minister at Colbray, where the dog once lived. And might live now. If you had not fed him every day to keep him here. Well, the folks at Colbray didn't license him, your lordship. Well, there'd be no charge for the lack of it. I'm paying for Bobby's license myself, John Trail. You'll do no such thing, James Brown. In all my life, I've never surrendered a principle before your lordship. But the charge is on me, and I'll... I'll pay it. I feel I must point out to you both that the dog sleeps under neither of your roofs. So belongs no more to one than to the other. I will summon Mr. License him and be his owner. And I will. But I ask first. Perhaps both of you are thinking more of winning an argument than winning the dog. A dog needs a home. But it needs love, too. That more than anything. Your Lordship, do you think he doesn't get that? Because he most certainly does. Not only from me and my wife, but from every child in Greyfriars. They feel he's one of them. Your Lordship, do not send him away from the kirkyard. For many of the bairns in Greyfriars, Bobby is the only love they know. And what are you bairns doing in here? Come on, out to bed. Go on, buddy, out! Mr. Mr. We're looking for Greyfriars Bobby. I and Mr. Trell that brought him here. Are you going to know? Young savages in the butter court. Have you taken me your senses? That's Bobby and Trell! Look! Silence. Close the door. Thank you. 
Mr. Conk. But where did your parents get all this money from? And how? Everybody around the country gave it to pay the place not to not go be dead. I gave it for Father and Mr. Trail. I knew every bill we lost. I gave a penny. Everybody gave something. Yes, we did. Shh, shh. How do you know how respectful we are? In the Greek borough court. Shh. Mr. Trail, hand the dog up here. I'm sorry, this. Any of you. Do you know what it means to be given the freedom of the city? Danny would know, sir. He's a scholar's head at school. Now. It's when the Queen comes, mister. And you give the keys to the bar gates, they're not here anymore. Right, laddie. The gates and walls are down. But we still give the keys to visitors who are grand, or wise, or just useful out of the ordinary. Like the Duke of Wellington and Miss Florence Nightingale. Yes, the brave and faithful. Now, here's a wee dog that's been faithful out of the ordinary. For a dead man he loved, He's gone hungry and be cold. He has never forgotten him. Or left his side by night. And do the policemen have to take him? If he's made free of the city, he can wander where he likes. What would Bobby do with keys? Great for eyes, Bobby, from the Lord Forest. Dozens of children who know him will bring seven shillings in farthings and pennies for him. If they buy the right for the dog to live in care of them all in the cat yard of Grey Fires. But he must have a collar so that all the police will know him and never take him up for a masterless dog. He belongs to all of you. And all of you are responsible for him now. You're free, we 